Hey, good morning, Drive Time. Welcome back. As always, I'm David Drum. And today I am joined by Pastor Lee Hayward. Uh, Lee is the lead pastor of Elmbrook Church outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He is also the CEO and founder of Brooklink, which is a global ministry resourcing organization that seeks to empower and resource church leaders all over the world, but mainly in underdeveloped and developing countries, uh, which means he has seen things. He has been places that you and I can hardly even imagine. Um, so Lee, welcome to drive time. And thank you so much for joining us. Hey Dave, it's great to be with you today. So, uh, we obviously spent some time, uh, before we hit record today, uh, talking about, uh, the topic of identity and how it's this, it's one of those things that it's, it's sometimes easy to recognize, but hard to define. And, uh, in our conversation, you had a, a rather, uh, uh, interesting experience uh, this week that that lends to this topic of identity. Uh, you mind sharing that with everybody? Yeah. Um, well, I, Dave, thanks again for the opportunity to to just uh, join you in conversation today. Um, yeah, I've been thinking about this subject because we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, and um, and I got a letter in the mail. Both my wife and I got a letter this week from our mortgage company, and um, I opened it up and. Lo and behold, it was a letter from the mortgage company informing me that they had had a data breach and um, that they had reason to believe that thousands of their customers' uh, identities had possibly been stolen. Critical information like your social security number, uh, your personal information. And, and I, it, it was really interesting and knowing that I was going to be doing this um, this drive time with you today. I was thinking about the whole subject of identity and I I just had a moment where I stopped and I thought, man, how am I feeling right now about getting this letter? And I had two immediate reactions. One was I was just flat out angry. <laughs> I was like, man, who would do this kind of thing? You feel almost like someone has just undressed you, that you're just so exposed in a moment like that. And you don't know who's out there that's got information about you that they shouldn't have. So I felt really my, uh, that was one emotion. The second emotion is that I actually was a little bit afraid, uh, to be quite honest that, you know, what's going to happen. Uh, are they going to get hold of my financial information? Are they going to get hold of my social security? Um, and, and it really is a very unnerving feeling. And I got to thinking about that in light of our conversation today. And I thought, you know, um, the same thing happens to us on um, an existential level, if I could use that term, mm -hmm. that when identity thieves come and try and steal who we are. And uh, when I think about the whole issue of identity, um, identity is whatever owns us. It, it, it could be, you know, um, our jobs, uh, it could be, uh, money, it could be power. It could be sex. It could be honor. There's all kinds of things out there that can own us. Uh, and we take things that are good things and we allow them to become ultimate things. And I think that's why understanding identity is such an important piece of who we are, especially as men. So you're talking about this, this idea of, entity, uh, of identity as the, the things that own us in our lives. And, you know, as, as a guy, you know, we, we hate, we kind of internally, we hate that thought of uh, something controlling us that, you know, we want to be the master of the ship. We want to be the guy behind the helms choosing the course. Um, but in reality, we, we regularly just give up control to other things. Um, and, and some of them are good things, right? They're not all bad things. You know, it's, it's easy to say like, Oh, this has become an idol in my life. I, I'm pursuing money. Well, money in and of itself is not a bad thing. It facilitates our, our life and our lifestyles and, and gives us opportunity to be generous. Um, so can you, I, I guess unpack that idea a little bit more from the standpoint of it, it has owned us 
and how that identity, when do we know that something has become our identity? How can we figure that out? Yeah, I, I think to your point, a lot of times, um, you know, there, there are things in our lives that uh, can steal um, our identity. Um, one might be um, other people. We allow other people to define who we are. It could be a coach. It could be a teacher. It could be a father, a mother, a spouse. Um, we can allow our own work to define who we are. In other words, we put all of our security in what other people say. Or another thief of identity is just trying hard to do image management or sin management for that, for that matter. Um, we're trying so hard to be a good person, or we're trying to portray ourselves or present ourselves to um, our friends, our colleagues, our spouse, our children, community leaders, church leaders, whatever the case may be. Um, we're working so hard at maintaining a certain image, um, or it could be maybe even our own success is what we look to to define who we are. And sometimes, unfortunately, even our past failures and mistakes uh, define us in ways that are not always healthy. And I think what happens is when we fall into the trap of doing those things, when we allow those things to define us, um, ultimately, those things become idols. And uh, those idols become what ground us as people. Um, they own us. They control us. Um, and we're not always aware that they're controlling us. But if you take those things away from us, or you remove that plank from the manage the, 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 the image that we've tried to build, all of a sudden things start to fall apart and we're not as secure as we thought we were. And that actually become that idol becomes our identity. That's, that's what owns us. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I, it, it, your point about as men, I think this is really pronounced, particularly in Western culture, that we, we think that we belong to ourselves. Uh, I have a right. friend of mine who says, you know, it's not who you are, it's whose you are. And we've been so conditioned by the culture that we've grown up in that we are the determiners of who we are. We become the masters of our destiny, the captain of our ship. You know, that's what's reinforced in our educational systems. It's what's reinforced in sports programs take control of things. It's a big mantra among men today. And the reality is, is that we were never meant to live that way. Um, God created us as dependent creatures, not independent. He created us as dependent to depend upon him for who we are. That's why Augustine talks about the God shaped vacuum that's inside of all of us. We try and stuff that thing, uh, that vacuum with, um, identity markers and they so often fail to satisfy us. Wow. That, that is a, a lot to just kind of wrap your head around because again, like it's, it's easy for us in, in our culture, in our day and age, we're like, Oh, what well, you know, what's your identity as man? Oh, I'm, you know, whether you're talking about faith or you're talking about you know, I'm a self-made man, or I, I identify as this or, or, or that. Um, but when you really start to drill down onto how that becomes your identity, we, it, it really does have a lot to do with these thieves that you were talking about, the, the things that we've allowed to, to move a little too close to become a little more, more important than they should. And all of those things really start to cling to us and, and, uh, tend to bend our trajectory a little bit, I guess is one way to say it. That's a great way to say it. And I, I think too, when we talk about, you know, what owns us is to think about what it's hard for us to say no to. So if your job is what you've put your identity in, um, when the boss calls and tells you, Hey, we got a big project. You, you can't say no to giving more hours to that. Um, and so that's what creates kind of an addiction in us that I, I have to keep walking toward this thing 
Because if you remove this from me, I lose something. It owns me. Or if my image that I've built up is that I'm a really successful, powerful businessman, and all of a sudden you tell me I have to say no to that, and I can't do that, well, that's telling me that that probably has more control over me than I realize. That's good. Uh, it, you know, it's interesting you say that because it just in my own experience, my own life, there have been times where, you know, the things that I didn't realize became part of my identity, part of, you know, became an idol to me. Um, you know, we realize it sometimes when God comes along and, and creates a series of events that, that shakes that a little bit, or, or maybe even removes it completely. And, and there's that, that panic, that, that loss of like, well, what do I even do now? Like I've always done a, B and C, and now I can't do any of those. What do I do with that? Um, it's just, it, sometimes you don't realize how, how much that has become a part of your identity until it's taken away. Yeah. 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 So, well, again, as we, we talked about, um, uh, before we, we started recording today, um, you know, the, being drive time, we, we look for opportunities to, to land in practical steps. We look for, um, you know, to take it out of these conceptual conversations and, and bring it down to a level where a guy can, can finish watching this video or finish listening to this podcast and say, well, I, I can do that. I can take that step. And, and the whole purpose is, is to grow and to develop it as, as a man. Yeah. Um, so with this concept of identity being so ethereal is so just so elevated and lofty and, and, just hard to define and nail down. Um, is there a, a step that we can take this week uh, to, to grow in this area? Uh, do you have a recommendation for us? Yeah, I think there's, there's a couple of things um, to, to consider. One, one might be just to spend some time um, alone, uh, find five, 10 minutes this week in your schedule um, and, and ponder the question, is there anything that owns me? Is there anything that wields so much control over my life right now, be it my job, be it my image that I'm trying to build, be it my portfolio, be it, you know, the way my body looks, be it my looks, be it, um, you know, the way I coach a, a boys basketball team or, you know, um, a sports team of any kind. Um, what is it that I feel like I've lost control over and it's actually controlling me and, and see where that conversation goes and pay attention, notice what immediately comes to mind, because generally these things, um, if we take the time to just ponder them and reflect on them for a few moments, um, if we're willing to give that kind of time to it, they, they usually immediately come to attention. And then a second thing that you might, and this probably would take, be a little bit more risky for us, but maybe sit down with a friend that you trust and that you know is on your side, not on your back. A good friend that maybe has known you for a while and knows all your warts and all your good things and bad things. And, and ask them, hey, if I were to ask you to sit on the other side of me, what would you say based upon my life and what you hear and see in my life? what would you say owns me? That's a pretty mm. risky question. And es especially if you let them be honest. Yeah. And invite them to say, I really want you to be honest with me. That might be uh, because sometimes we are blind to see the things that own us. Um, we don't always see it. And that's the mm. subtlety of it. You, you sometimes don't know that you're building your identity around a flimsy foundation because you're so used to doing it that way that it's not immediately obvious to you, but it's immediately obvious to other people. Right. Especially right. those who are closest to you. So those, those be a couple of things. Well, that's really good. Um, well, 
Lee, I, I just want to say thank you. And, and guys, what I, what I'll tell you is uh, we're going to do a part two to this video because there there's more to this concept of identity and, 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 and identity that really matters is really what it comes down to. Uh, so definitely uh, make sure you check back in with us next week. Um, but Lee, thank you for your time today. Thank you for, for sharing this idea, giving us that, that analogy of uh, identity theft uh, that I think, unfortunately, too many of us can, can picture what that's like. Um, so, but thank you for being here today. Thanks so much, Dave. It's been a joy to be with you. Guys, uh, that's the challenge. Uh, a little two-part one from uh, uh, Lee Hayward here. And uh, join us again next week here on Drive Time.